to multiplication methods. Uh, just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes shot reveal for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Now in today's uh, video, I'm going to show you three different methods for doing multiplication. I'm going to show you the column method, the grid method and Napier's bones. Um, now, I'm not going to say any one of these uh, methods is better than the other. Um, whichever one you feel most comfortable with and the, whichever one you are getting the right answers with, that's the one you should be sticking with. Uh, but I just want to show you three different versions in case one stands out to you as being a slightly easier method than the others. Um, and I'm going to begin with the column method and I'm beginning with that because that is where uh, most people will come from primary school will be the method that you've been shown uh, shown most of the time and so let's just check how we use it for questions like 7 times 63 well in the main part is the column method you must make sure that when you set it up that the number with the fewest digits is at the bottom and that the units are lined up with each other. So in this case, the seven is lined up with the three, and if there were tens involved, the tens would have to be lined up as well. And what we need here is we need to um, take um, a couple of stages. I'm going to do seven multiplied by three. Seven multiplied by three is 21. Now, all I'm going to do is write down the units of that answer. I'm going to write down the one. The two, is going to be carried over. Now, some people may write that two at the top of the uh, at the top of the diagram. I write it just on top of the line to keep track of where I need to add it on. Because next, I'm going to do seven times six, and seven times six is 42. 42, I then need to add on the two that were left over. So 42 plus two is 44. And I write all that down, and so seven times 63 is 440. One. Next we have the grid method. Now the grid method um, takes us into a situation where we have to split up some of our numbers. It's just there to make sure that we definitely get the correct um, size of all our answers um, and also that we make sure we do multiply by every single element that needs multiplying. Um, and so in this case I've used two boxes and the two boxes are there because we have 84 and that 84 is how I'm going to split it up. The 6 is on the left hand side and now this is just a multiplication grid so these two uh, two things are going to be multiplied together now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with the first box which is six times eighty now i'm going to do six times eight is forty eight but then because there is a zero with the eighty i'm going to add a zero onto the end of that number so six times eighty is four hundred and eighty the last box is just six times four so six times four is twenty Four. And then our final stage in this method is that we need to add those two answers together. So 480 and 24 need adding together. So we'll have 0 plus 4 is 4. 8 plus 2 is 10. So again, I want to carry over. And 4 plus 0 plus the 1, well, that is 5. And so 6 times 84 will be 504. Now Napier's bones, now this one is possibly the, uh, it looks the most complicated um, to set up, but actually makes things quite easy in terms of the actual multiplication. In this case, I've used two boxes um, for the 76, but in this case, instead of putting a zero in there, I'm just going to actually write down 7, 6, 76. And on the right hand side this time, I'm going to write the number 9. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply for the first box 7 times 9. And 7 times 9 is 63. And so 63, we write the tens in the first block and the units in the second block. 63. 6 times 9 is 54. So I write the 5 for the 50 in the first block and the 4 for the uh, 4 in the second block. Now this is where it is a bit complicated as well in how we actually then read off our answers. Now what we need to do is we need to think about diagonals. And so the first diagonal here has the number 4 in it. The second diagonal, well that um, has 3 and 5 in it. I need to add those two together. So 5 plus 3 is 8. Oh, let's just change the pens there. 8. And then the last diagonal in this case, just has the 6 in it. So I don't need to do any adding. I just write the word, uh, the number 6. And so 9 times 76, if I read my answer, I read along the bottom here, 
it's 684. Okay, so now we're going to try each of those methods um, with um, two digit numbers multiplied by two digit numbers. Um, now, in the first case, the column method, we've got 24 times 38. Now, um, depending on um, how you've seen this in the past, um, some people say that you must keep the smaller number at the bottom, uh, some people put the smaller number at the top. It actually doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to put the smaller number at the bottom just because we did that in the previous question. We had the sing uh, smaller number of digits at the bottom. Um, and so this one is 38 times 24. And what I'm going to do first, it's going to be 4 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32. So I'm going to write the 2 for the units. And then I'm just going to put my little 3 here to remind me that I need to add that when I come to the next stage. Then I'm going to do 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12, but I need to add in the 3 that we carried over. So that is now 15. So 4 times 38 is 152. This is where the column method um, occasionally has a, a few problems. People miss this one step. The next number that we are multiplying is this 2. The 2 is going to be multiplied by the 8, but that 2 is actually representing 20. And so because this is a tens, we need to straight away write down a 0 because it's actually 20 times 8, not 2 times 8. And so 2 times 8 is then 16. And so again, we'll have a little 1 to remind us that we're going to carry that over. And then 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6 with the extra 1 is a seven now because we have two answers we need to add those together two plus zero is two five plus six is eleven and one plus seven plus one is nine and so 24 times 38 is 912 if we use the grid method for 16 times 75, in this case I've had to use four boxes and that's because um, our 75 is 70 and 5 and our 16 is 10 and 6. Now again, just like with the column method, it doesn't actually matter which order you put those. So you could have put the 10 and the 6 at the top and the 70 and the 5 at the side. Um, as long as you keep the uh, two digits that were together originally together on the grid. Now, in this case, 70 times 10. Well, 7 times 1 is 7. But then, in this question, I have a 0 for the 10 and a 0 for the, 100, uh, for the 70. And therefore, I need to add two zeros to that. 70 times 10 is 700. In the next box, 10 times 5. Well, 1 times 5 is 5. But we have a 0, so we need to add that on. Then we have 70 times 6. Well, 7 times 6 is 42, but we have a 0, so we'll need to add that on. And the last one is just 6 times 5, so it's just the direct answer. 6 times 5 is 30. Now, at this point, um, it's up to you how you go about uh, setting this up. I often add a cross to begin with, so 700 plus 50 is 750, and 420 plus 30 is 450 and then I can add those two numbers together or you can just make one big list of all of the numbers and add those together in a single column method so 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 2 plus 5 plus 3 is 10 and so a 0 with a 1 carried 7 plus 4 is 11 plus 1 is 12 and so 16 times 75 is 1,200. And then Napier's bones. Napier's bones for 39 times 54. Again, we don't actually need to worry about anything in terms of um, extra zeros or where they're going to be placed. We can just write them exactly as they come. 3954 or 39 times 54. And then in each case, we're just going to fill in what would fit into each box. So 3 times 5 is 15. So that is a 1 and a 5. 9 times 5 is 45. So 4 and a 5. 3 times 4 is 12. So 1 and 2. 9 times 4 is 36. So 3, 6. And then all we need to do, like we did before, we're going to look down the different um, uh, different 
diagonals. So the first diagonal is a 6. The second diagonal is all of these values. So 5 plus 3 plus 2, well that is 10. And so just like we did before, we're going to write down the 0 here, but we're going to carry the 1 into the next diagonal. And the next diagonal is 5 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1, and that is 11. And so we'll write down the 1 and carry a 1 into the next diagonal. And the final diagonal, therefore, is just this piece here, the 1 and the 1, which gives us 2. And so 39 times 54 is 2,106. Okay, so now, now let's have a look at three-digit numbers being multiplied by two-digit numbers um, and just see how we're going to go about doing each of these. Um, so for the column method, 123 times 45. Again, in terms of setting it up, let's pop underneath the number that has the least number of digits um, and line them up. And so in the first case, we have 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. So we'll write down the 1 but we'll carry over the tens. Um, five times two is 10, plus the one is 11. Carry over another one. And five times one is five, plus the one is six. So that's telling me that five times 123 is 615. But then we need to do the second line. We need to be thinking about multiplying the 40 by 123. And there's the key, we're multiplying 40 by 123 and so we must put that zero at the bottom four times three would be 12 so we write down the uh, the two and we carry over sorry carry over the one two times two uh, sorry four times two is eight plus the one is nine and four times one is four and so 123 times 40 is 4920 then we just need to add those two answers together. So 5 times uh, plus 0 is 5, 1 plus 2 is 3, 6 plus 9 is 15, and 4 plus 1 is 5. And so 123 times 45 is 5,535. For the grid method, we have 242 times 46 and so in this case we've got six boxes uh, involved and that is because we have 242 multiplied by 46 and all we need to do here once again is multiply together one box at a time so four times two is eight and in this case there is one two three zeros so we'll need to put three zeros in the box Next, we have 40 times 40, or 4 times 4 is 16, but we have two zeros, and so that's going to be 1,600. And then we have 40 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8, with a zero on the end. 6 times 200 is the next one, so 6 times 2 is 12, and uh, with two zeros, so 1,200. 6 times 40 is 6 times 4 is 24 with 1 0 and 6 times 2 is 12. Then we just want to line up all of the answers that we've just gotten. So that's 8,000, 1,600 and let's keep it so we keep all of the thousands together. So 1,200, then the numbers that are in the hundreds, 240 and then 80 and then 12. We'll line them all up and add them all together. 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 is 2. 4 plus 8 plus 1, well that is 13. Carry the 1. 6 plus 2 plus 2 is 10, plus the 1 is 11. 8 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that is 11. And so what we have there is 242 times 46 is 11,132. And then we come to Napier's Bones. All we need to do is write down 139 for 139 and 82 for 82. 
and then we're just going to multiply together. So in the first box, we have one times eight. Now one times eight is eight. Now that means we don't have any tens. Therefore, we need to write a zero in the tens and an eight in the units. Um, three times eight is 24. Nine times eight is 72. One times two is two. So again, we don't have any tens. So it's zero, two. Three times six is six. So again, zero, six. And then nine times two is 18. In order to get our answers, we just need to use the diagonals. So our first diagonal is just the eight. Our second diagonal is two plus one plus six. So that's nine. The third diagonal, seven plus four is 11, plus two is 13. So we'll carry the one. Um, the next diagonal, two plus eight plus one, well that is 11. So we carry over the one. And the last diagonal is also a one. And so our final answer, 139 times 82 is 11,398. And finally, we come to the exam question. It came from the Edexcel paper in November 2019, and it was on foundation paper one. Um, now, the question I've chosen here is just to work out 23 times 15. Now, this method, um, I will say, will come in questions of all types. It will be in questions where it simply asks you to multiply two numbers together. Um, but also, you're going to need to be able to multiply big numbers in a range of different situations, um, especially in uh, problem solving questions, especially in money problems. Uh, but in this case, we're just doing 23 times 15. And so let's set it up in the three ways just to see which one we prefer. So we can use the column method, which would be 23 times 15. We could use the grid method. Well, because this is two digit numbers multiplied together, well, that's going to be two blocks. And for Napier's bones, the same thing. We're going to have um, two blocks, but with our diagonals drawn in as well. 23, 10, 5, 2, 3, 1, 5. And let's just pop them all together. Let's see what we get. So 5 times 3 is 15, with the 1 carried. 5 times 5 is 10, plus the 1 is 11. And then we have 10 times 23. So remember, we need our zero writing down first. And then 1 times 3 is 3. And 1 times 2 is 2. Add our two answers together. 5, 4, 3. So 345. In the grid method, 10 times 20. Well, that's 1 times 2 is 2 with two zeros. 10 times 3 is 30. 5 times 20. Well, 5 times 2 is 10 with a zero and five times three is 15 add them all together we have 200 130 and 15 five four three and finally with napier's bones two times one is two so that's zero two three times one is three zero three two times five is ten and three times five is fifteen take one diagonal at a time so we have final one is five the next one is three plus one four and zero plus two plus one is three three hundred and forty five